Welcome to the Weightlifting Scoop. This is James Tatum. We've got Travis Cooper and Glenn Pendley here with us today. Hello. So proper. Oh man, we were at the house today and uh and this guy comes up to the door and uh James and Stephanie just bought a house, so congrats to them for for getting the house. It's pretty nice. They'll let me stay with them for a few more months. And um so we got this sales guy that comes up to the door today, and he's selling these vacuum cleaners. They're called uh, Kirby's. It's not just a vacuum cleaner, Travis. It's a Kirby. I had no idea they still <laughs> sold Kirby. I know they used to be that. Oh, like you've heard 20, of it. 30 years ago. Yeah, it used to be. They used to be a big door-to-door sales thing. Well, it Kirby reminded vacuums. me of uh, of like the the movie Napoleon Dynamite where he's selling Tupperware. And he's just, he's just, I mean, this dude was in our house for like an hour and a half. He basically told James, he's like, Hey, if you let me do this, I'll make $50. So, <laughs> so we're like, okay, what the hell? You know, we got an hour. He was, he spent the entire hour just telling us everything. I mean, I guess, uh, uh, our vacuum cleaner only sucks at 30 CPMs <laughs> and that one sucks at 120 CPMs. I don't know what the hell that means, but this vacuum cleaner is four times more powerful than ours. Well, I've heard the Dyson vacuum cleaners have the highest suction rate of any. Well, I don't know. I mean, this one, this one's about ten times the price of a Dyson, though. Yeah, it's uh, it's made out of aluminum. It uh, it also can uh, shampoo your carpets. He uh, he kind of cleaned our whole living room, so that was nice. Okay, what's the price? Twenty nine ninety five, and there's no decimal points. <laughs> Three grand. <laughs> Silence. That better be a hell of a vacuum cleaner. That's all I can say. Yeah, it looked uh, it looked pretty intense. Was it? Because I remember my grandmother's Kirby vacuum cleaner. You know, they still have uh, they have lifetime warranty. So if you can just get the paperwork from when your grandmother bought that, we can get a brand new one and be like, hey, this old one sucks. We need a new one. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't have even have, uh, there's no way I could ever find that, but. That he said we'd awesome. be, he said this thing would last us 40 to 60 years, and I was like, dude, I can't, and that's, that's a commitment. I'm getting married to a damn vacuum. I don't know if I still <laughs> want to be vacuuming 40 <laughs> to 60 years from now. Yeah, I don't know about all that. Well, that, that, what, what did it look like? Did it have a green bag? Cause my grandmother's had a green bag. No, it looked like, uh, a grandmother's curtain, uh, as the bag. So it was greenish and had some designs on that's, it. That's pretty much what I remember. It's, from, uh, yeah, the same one? It, I, from what you described so far, yeah, it's probably the exact same model. Silver looking? Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it. It's, yeah. Uh, Does so it weigh 90 pounds? He actually did not let me pick it up. I, uh, well, I should, probably should have asked, but I didn't want to be touching that thing. $2,995 and break that thing and. Well, for $2,995, no decimal points. It shouldn't break. Well, I, I mean, I don't know. I hope this dude isn't breaking into our house now. He was just, <laughs> his ride disappeared and <laughs> we left him out on the street. Yeah, he's standing out there next to the mailbox. So I, I hope he got a ride back, but who knows? Um, I have a, a tendency to break cleaning products. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's my subconscious saying that people shouldn't let me clean, but everything seems to break. So, I mean, so I'll tell, well, Travis, I, I did break your vacuum cleaner, but I fixed it. I didn't tell you about that. <laughs> so <laughs> about that, those, those Swiffer sweepers, man, I go through those things like one a month. I just break right in half. <laughs> so that's where the, I was wondering where that, uh, that Swiffer was because I was going to, I was going to, uh, clean up the kitchen because I hadn't been helping out too much with the move-in. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll clean the kitchen. <laughs> and James broke the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> they need to make them like, they need to make them more heavy duty. Aluminum. Yeah. Maybe make like the shaft out of a Pendele barbell. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> then I might not be able to break it or bend it, you know. Maybe. Maybe. Um, but yeah, no, this guy was a trip. Uh, James, they just got a brand new mattress and this dude like vacuumed up the mattress and was like, look, would you be sleeping in this thing if you knew all this was in here? And James was like, where else am I going to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> it's the only mattress I've got, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to scare me out of my house if I don't buy this $2,995 vacuum cleaner with no decimal points. <laughs> yeah. So was your mattress actually that dirty, James? Or was it just normal? 
Well, I uh, I don't know. I think he just put stuff in the vacuum cleaner to make it like look dirty. I don't know. Salespeople, they can be. It's all a scamming. giant scam. I don't want to tell everybody how dirty I am, and I do take <laughs> I do take a shower before I go to sleep, though. If that. Well, I mean, look. I mean, we just moved into the new house like eight days ago, so we hadn't even we haven't really vacuumed or anything all that much because we're still unpacking stuff. So we let this dude come in here. He cleaned the whole living room, and I, I posted a picture on Instagram. James watching him clean. <laughs> so, if you could just get a Kirby vacuum salesman to come over every, every other day. I know, no shit, huh? You have a whole clean house. Yeah. So we got the cleanest three by three patch of carpet in Charlotte right now. <laughs> <laughs> he spent an hour and a half cleaning that patch of carpet. But anyways. Um so what's I going still on? Can't, I still can't believe they still sell Kirby's door to door. I, mean, I didn't they, know they that. did that when I was little. And and like my grandmother had a Kirby and sure enough I, I remember talking to her about it. She bought it from a door to door salesman like like 1960 or something. Yeah, I thought it was funny. I mean, it just reminded me of kind of that mentality in the 70s when they did the door-to-door sales. and Encyclopedias. And I imagine I was listening to disco music at the time that he was in there. Um, but anyways, what else is new, guys? Uh, not much on my end. What about you, James? Well, I didn't get a new vacuum cleaner. Um, we're leaving tomorrow at noon. Yeah, leaving tomorrow for Poland at noon, so that'll be a lot of fun. The worst part about it is we have to go to Chicago first. Chicago, I know. That's that's where Tom's from. Yeah, that is where, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is where Tom's from, and Mike too. I think uh, I think Tim's from out there too. Yeah, and then Elizabeth Ackenwally. How, how did we get so many people from Chicago on our team? I don't know. Somewhere wrong. Yeah, good thing they moved down here, though. Yeah. Makes it a little better. A little better. A little better. Still, they're, they're from Chicago. Though. That that stain never completely goes away. Not even with a Kirby <laughs> vacuum cleaner. Man, I'm not even a part of this. <laughs> uh, so you guys leave tomorrow for noon. I'm stuck here until Sunday. Uh, James gets to go over to Poland and adjust for a while. He, he lives next Wednesday. I live next Thursday. And the cool thing about it is that we lift at 10 p.m. Polish time, which means we lift at 4 p.m. our time, which conveniently is when we train every single day. So I think that's great for us. Yeah, yeah, it's weird how that worked out. Yeah, I, uh, I was kind of happy. It took me a while to figure out the time zones and got it all on my uh, my fancy smartphone that tells me uh, the time difference. So I, uh, I'm i ready. It's funny, James, that you have only had a smartphone for, what, like a month? That's about right. And you already know how to do more things on your smartphone than I do. And I've had one for a long time. Oh, yeah. I uh, I like that thing. You get a lot of a lot of stuff done on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or I, you can be like me and just text and answer the phone. Yeah. Well. I do check my email. Thanks out. to me and my smartphone, I actually printed off the flight information. Well, or the something, some information for worlds for you from my smartphone to your printer. So, I mean, that, that's, that's kind of cool. My, my printer's off. Well, maybe it was Chris's printer. It was, uh, it, it was, was Chris's, these. Chris Kojak. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's pretty fancy. And Glenn's a noob with smartphones and technology in general, but. Well, I'm not, I'm not new with smartphones. I've, I've had a smartphone for a long time. I well, just no, don't know I how said, to use I them. said you are a noob. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. N00B. What does that mean? I just don't know how to use it very well. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that I don't get that. All right. Well, <laughs> semi to, semi nerd joke, I guess. Way to bust your joke. Well, all to, all sorts of people that are listening to this know exactly what he means, and we don't. Well, are they from Chicago? Probably not. What What is going on with James though, man? He got a new car, a new phone, a new house. He's considering getting a Kirby. I mean, this man won the lottery or something. It's ruining my whole image of James. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know if I'm actually going to get a Kirby. I uh, I like listening to salespeople and then kind of laugh at their uh, their funny sales pitches. You know, they're calling their boss and oh, speaking of that, he uh, he brought it down to two thousand dollars after we uh, 
said no. Called his boss, yeah. We kind of rushed him out the door and be like, hey, we got to go do this uh, this crazy cool uh, radio show or podcast. That uh, And then he was packed up and left. Well, and that's how you get him out of the house. You got to know when to uh, kick him out. I don't think I've ever bought anything from a salesperson. I'm pretty uh, pretty stingy there. Well, so what would the price have to be for you to buy that vacuum cleaner? About seventy five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I have seventy five dollars in my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm, you were every salesperson's worst nightmare. Oh, I know I am. But, uh, hey, I made that guy $50. I should have cut a deal with him. I should have said, I'll buy that vacuum for 49 <laughs> If you're kidding me. <laughs> you get a dollar and all this extra like sales stuff that he gets. That I would have got it for that, you know. I think I would probably buy a Kirby for $100. I don't know. I mean, it was it was pretty convincing. I mean, <laughs> he had me wanting a Kirby. <laughs> Until he said two thousand dollars. I mean, two thousand was like the mega discount. That's after he called his uh, boss on speakerphone and he's like, "Hey, this guy has to talk to his wife, but if he calls him by the end of the day, what's the, what's the best deal we can give him?" And his boss was like, "Well, we can give him zero down and two thousand dollars, and then we can finance it for X." And it's like. At this point, it's pretty obvious that James was like not paying attention to him. He was like making coffee in the living room. I mean, in the um, in the kitchen while he's in the living room. Did like, you offer the guy some coffee? <laughs> no, because I drank no. the rest of it. <laughs> Damn, that's cold. But James did teach me. He taught me how to make his famous chili. Uh, so I meet with a group of people on Wednesdays, a group with my church, and uh, it's my week to make food. So I was like, all right, James, you got to teach me how to make chili. So James was like going back and forth trying to teach me how to make this chili while this dude's in the living room cleaning for us. Um, so it was pretty funny. Yeah, that, that sounds like a grand old time. Yeah, the uh, I think we're going to enter our chili into Tom's uh, chili recipe uh, cook-off thing that they're going to have. Uh, I think ours is going to win. <laughs> Mark Hazarbedi and gave me a chili recipe once that looks like, judging from the ingredients... It looks pretty damn good, but I've never made it. Well, James makes really good chili, but I have to say, so the, the Strength Agenda, they do this annual, um, this is going to be the second chili cook-off, and I will say the chili that won last time was phenomenal. So I don't know if James's chili can beat that one. So the competition is pretty high. Yeah, that uh, that was some good chili. There, there was a couple chilies there that... Uh that night, there was a, there was a couple with bacon in it. Uh, they didn't have any uh, deer chili. That's always pretty good. I think uh, I think Matt's got a bunch of deer in the freezer at his place. Maybe he can make a, a deer chili or something like that. But um, anyways, it should be a lot of fun. It's gonna be the week that we get back from Worlds. They're gonna do the chili cook off. So I'm excited to try everybody's recipes. Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, our, our art department just sent me a sent me a uh, prototype for our new MDUSA singlet. I don't think it's gonna it's gonna be the one we pick. <laughs> it's uh it's got a little bit of a deficit in the material on the posterior. Uh, that's a nice joke. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, you, you get a big butt. Some of the times those singlets don't work. If you're squatting a lot. I think this one would work. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <sighs> that you know what? You know what? You know what? Venison, which is also known as deer meat, very, tastes really good. Very good, good in, coach. Very good. Is uh, tacos? Taco seasoning like taco meat. Venison's yeah. excellent taco meat. I think anything in a tortilla with some guacamole would taste pretty damn good. No, yeah, I don't like guacamole. So sour cream, whatever. Sour pick, cream. pick your poison. Yeah. It would taste pretty good. You're right. You are correct, but venison tastes especially good. So we got Worlds in the American Open coming up. Everybody's uh, I'm not even thinking about the American Open yet. <laughs> I mean, not until we get back from Worlds, I don't think. But, but yeah, we should. I'm very hopeful for Worlds. Um, well, you're thinking about it a little bit because you're making the programming for the guys. You know, they're doing some. Uh, yeah. Some pauses, so obviously that's not something you do close to a meet, and they're going to cut that out probably here in the next week or so. Um, 
So you're thinking about it a little bit, but just not about your own travel. Yeah, a little bit. We've got we've got motels. We've got the meat hotel. For I, ho- American I hope Open. you mean hotels. Hotel. <laughs> we got the meat hotel. Come on. You're scaring us. We are going to Texas, so I I assume that you know your way around. Uh, somewhat, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's in Dallas. Should be at a real nice place. Um, there's a good good group of folks putting the meat on. Um, so I, I think the American Open will be a, be a really nice meet. Um, now they did have a really good American Open last year. Yeah. They and got that, a, they got some big shoes to fill. Yeah. Palm Springs is cool. Yeah. That, uh, well, this is in Cal, this is in Dallas though. This is in Texas. Does that automatically trump? Well, it, you it, know, it like the Cowboys trumps. are in Dallas too, and you seem to hate them. Yeah. I hate the Cowboys, but most other things really? about Texas are, are good. Well, interesting. I used to have a Cal- uh, Dallas Cowboys uh, jersey jacket thing that I used to wear when I was a kid. It's my favorite jacket. Sorry, James. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know who it was. I mean, I don't. As everyone knows, that's been around me is I don't follow sports, uh, and uh, I'm not a big sports fan. So I'm surprised I like that jacket so much. Yeah, I'm surprised too. I'm surprised too. I got it at the thrift shop. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that. It's more in line with. With your uh, image, then a new car and a new house with or the, a new Kirby. <laughs> it's in line with the James Tatum that we all know. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I used to uh, I used to play this uh, video game on a on a, what, what's it called a, uh, a little handheld Nintendo thing, and uh, they used to have a game out called like Kirby the Ghost or something. And so I mentioned that to this guy, and I was like, Oh yeah, I know the little the video game Kirby, and he's like, He, he didn't think uh, he didn't know that that was. Yeah, I think he was a little offended that I compared his. Uh, Vacuum cleaner to a video game. Obviously, he has a severe lack of humor. Yeah, I rehearsed sales pitch. Kind of gets boring, I'm sure. Well, it probably it probably gets boring when he presents that sales pitch to people like you. Kind of lead him on, let him do his whole spiel. Hey, he made fifty dollars. Dude, you're blue balling the hell out of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he ended up working for an hour. Yeah, well, I mean, where was he going to go? His ride disappeared. It was he, his ride was still gone when we left. Yeah, I guess it's better to be in your comfortable house than out on the street. Yeah, very much so. Very much so, especially if you'd have had the had the, you know, the uh, hospitality to give the guy some coffee. Yeah, that that might have been. I a bet good when idea. the coffee was brewing, Dude, he was really looking forward to a cup of that coffee. This this guy had no trouble talking. If we gave him a cup of coffee, he'd be. We'd have to kick him out earlier. He was too much. What's up with the? Um, what's up with this coach? I feel like crap. I don't know. I think you know you you went really light a couple of workouts last week, and then really went hard after some PRs and. You know, I mean, I think you're going to have a little bit of, little bit of, you know, downtime after that, but it has been more than I would have expected. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess the week out of the OTC, I hit a fair amount of PRs. Then I came back and hit another jerk PR and I was going after some cleans. I did hit a PR double in the clean, but so I mean, I was feeling awesome. And then all of a sudden it's like <sighs> hit a wall. Just crashed. Yeah, you, know, you don't live for no eight, airbags. You don't live for eight days, though. You know, I think that's. Yeah, no, I'll be feeling fine by the time the meet. I mean, I'm glad that it happened far enough out where we can really commit to a a, a th- well thought out taper. But um, it really did surprise me because I came in on Monday and I was like, okay, you know, I didn't squat heavy on Saturday or anything like that, so I was thinking like I'd be feeling really rested up. And then I just had nothing. You even look like crap. I mean, you're sitting over there in your <laughs> chair just looking like it would take all the willpower that you could muster to, like, get up and walk across the room, you know. I almost got pinned with 150. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't say I almost got pinned, but. No, it was definitely, like, a lot slower standing up than usual. Yeah. Uh, I just did a few reps, and then I called it a day. Sometimes you just got to know when your body needs a rest, but um, that was kind of interesting. But I guess more of the point of me bringing that up is that I'm sure people kind of had uh, had that happen to them when it gets close to a meet and they get scared about it. And um, I was kind of feeling that way before nationals. So 
I guess my point was is it's kind of normal to feel shitty or you can kind of like you have time to rest up if you're a week out still. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully we plan to hit like uh, 140, 170 today. Yeah, just kind of inch my way back up and, and uh, just hit Chris, no misses, you know, just yeah, get little, back in the routine. A little better than that on Friday. And and then I think you'll be you'll be right on, you know, I mean. I think you've proven that if you hit even like 45, 80 or something, you know, before a meet, given the amount of heavyweights you hit, you know, in regular training before you start to try to peak, I mean, that's that's plenty heavy enough to be ready to go into a meet. Well, John did used to call it the taper bug, so some of you guys out there know what that term means. So uh, he used to say when you kind of back off for a couple of days, in which I guess I kind of backed off for a couple of days, your body shuts down a little bit, and then – there's a lag time before that rest actually like shows up in your training for the better. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, uh, for you at this particular time, this particular situation, I think that, uh, more than anything, it's probably just the mental stimulation of being at the training center for a week, pushing real hard, making PRs, coming home. Um, you know, you pushed real hard on the jerk and also, you know, in the attempt for a clean PR, like you said, you hit a, you had a PR double, but not a single. But it's just the mental uh, stimulation and being really up and really going for it. Um, it takes a toll mentally, and it takes a toll like on your nervous system and whatnot. And sometimes you just need a little break. But I think the good thing is that when that happened, you know, you didn't stop coming in or stop training. I mean, you just went light, and now it's starting to kind of turn around for you. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, when you got a meet coming up, you don't stop coming in. You just kind of come in and make sure you're hitting crisp, technically sound lifts, and really try not to like bury yourself further than you already are because you want to come out of it and really end out on top of that mountain. Um, <coughs> but, James, you seem to be training pretty well. Like, uh, you had an awesome uh, local meet here, and you hit a couple PRs, and then what's your plan going into Worlds? Are you just going to keep hitting it hard, or are you going to start trying to hit specific numbers every training session, uh, cut the volume? Well, I... Going into that last meet where I did, uh, where I got the best competition PR that I've done, uh, I really didn't, uh, really didn't slow down too much going up to it and I kind of kept the squats up. Uh, and I think that kind of paid off. I think, uh, going hard in squats right now, which we normally do far away from competition, has actually kind of helped me out. I feel like my legs are a lot stronger than normal, which makes it a lot easier to, to catch these clean and jerks. But a lot of people know if they watch me clean, I, uh, I tend to get stuck there at the bottom right at the, uh, on the clean and then my elbows kind of come forward and then I have to kind of straighten up, sit down there for a second and then stand up. But once since I've been doing all these, uh, sets of five on the back squat, I think I'm getting a lot stronger and I can catch that bounce a lot better. James actually is catching a bounce. Um, it's most pronounced at like 130, 140. Um, and it's carrying over to like one, 167. You caught a bounce pretty good the other day. Uh, that's really the first time I've ever seen that. So you think it's just like leg strength catching a bounce out of the back squat, or do you even really feel like you catch a bounce out of the back squat? Like how is that coming along? Yeah, I used to do, before I started weightlifting, I used to do a lot of pause squats, and uh, I didn't really catch the bounce out of a lot of it. So that was kind of a hard thing for me to learn into weightlifting is to start catching the bounce. So I've actually been catching a bounce on uh, back squats for a while now, but uh, my rhythm was still a little messed up on my clean. And uh Ever since I started cleaning up the rhythm of my uh, of my clean, it's kind of made a big difference. Um, but the other thing is your squat is up. I mean, you've squatted a set of five with about 10, 12 more kilos this training cycle than you had before, uh, say, Nationals or the American Open. Yeah, the, uh, I was stuck at like uh, 200 for a set of five for the longest time, and now I can kind of hit that on a regular basis. And the best I've done is 211 for five. And uh, so I think, yeah, that definitely has a uh, a big carryover into it. Yeah, I I think you're just playing a little bit stronger this time, you know. That's that's one of the biggest things. I thought for a second, uh, just a second ago, you were going to say hard in the paint. <laughs> 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 we always uh, say James goes hard in the paint, so. But uh, I never knew what that meant. Even after they started saying it for a couple of weeks, I finally was like, so, what does that mean? <laughs> and then, of course, it was a uh, a sporting term that uh, 
that I don't follow. I don't follow sports. I don't follow basketball or anything like that. So it was all new to me. <laughs> well, it's not really a sporting term, but uh, I mean, I guess originally. But yeah, it's pretty funny. I think like Glenn asked me one time, like, "What is what is going the hard in the paint mean?" It's like it means he was getting crunk. It's like what is getting crunk mean? <laughs> It means it was going hard in the paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can kind of understand the hard in the paint thing after thinking about it, the basketball reference, whatever, but still crunk. I, I don't understand that word. So, you know, it's a losing proposition. <laughs> the kids today, these kids. It's probably why the Kirby salesman didn't know what I was talking about. How old was that guy? Oh, I'd guess around 67. Really? Yeah. An older dude. Huh? Yeah. I got you. See, I had him all pictured as being, you know, 25 or 30. No, yeah, he probably would have sold more uh, Kirby's that way, but no, he was uh, he's an old dude. Well, I guess there's nothing, go- he, he, nothing go- he could do about that. He's going hard in the paint. <laughs> it's like a 60-year-old Dave Chappelle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> don't know anyways i guess this is going to be the last episode before we get back from poland um we're going to be there for a week so we're not going to bring the equipment or anything and hopefully we get some we have some uh some good news to talk about when we get home but regardless we'll come on and talk about the good bad and the ugly of the competition so you're gonna be the head coach glenn or at least co-head coach with uh with wilkes yeah um that's a that's a good thing i guess i was i was happy that they you know, they at first uh, picked one person, then another person, and then there was some technical reasons why the first couple that they picked uh, couldn't be the head coach, and then they picked Chris, who actually couldn't be the head coach either for a different technical reason, and they ended up making Chris and I, you know, co-head coaches. So it's, you know, it's a good thing. I mean, for one, it means they get a paid trip. Um, so, you know, that's worthwhile. And, and for the other, I mean – um you know, I'm absolutely, you know, sure there's no problem with who gets into the warm-up room and not. I just, I think it'll, I think it'll be a, a good me. And, and, you know, it's funny that, you know, um, we have, a whole, we have a whole new team except for the 69 Caleb Williams. Um, everybody else is their first time on the world championship team. Mm-hmm. And so it's like a complete turnover from the last couple of years. And, um, certainly hope that we have a, uh, a good performance and you know we haven't had the best performances in the last couple of years at worlds we've had you know people that kind of underperformed their expectations and everything and you know I'm of great hope that this year with basically you know a whole new at least men's team that uh, we can we can improve somewhat on our showing the last couple of worlds well so for the people who don't know um basically you're Placement as a country in 2014 and 2015 determines how many Olympic spots you get. So this year doesn't count. So it's actually a really good thing that a lot of, I don't know if you'd say younger, but people who have never really been to Worlds before get the opportunity to go on the world team, get that experience, so that next year when it counts, hopefully some of these people are on the world team again. They know what it's like. They know what to expect. They understand how their body's going to react, how nervous they're going to be, um, and what things have changed to better, you know, to help their performance for next year. Absolutely. I I think there's some people that look at this as, like, not an important meet because it doesn't count for Olympic points, but I think it's a very important meet with all the younger lifters and the the turnover on the team. And, you know, these are going to be a lot of the lifters that are going to score points or not score points for us uh, for Olympic placements. So we definitely want things to start off with this new group in a positive way. And the cool thing is since we had the camp, uh, Glenn and – uh, what's his first name? Chris Wilkes. Chris Wilkes. Yeah. Chris Wilkes. Um, he was out there. Both of you guys were out there, so you saw basically the entire world team. Um, I guess Jared Fleming wasn't out there. Was anybody else not out there? I think, with with that exception, everybody was there. And I mean, you're and, and James, but obviously you coach James on a daily basis, so you know exactly what he's capable of, and you're pretty familiar with Jared, and he'll yeah. be, he'll be honest with you. So, yeah. I think you guys have good insight into how healthy and capable everyone is this year and i think having the camp and then having the coaches at the camp was a huge plus yeah Um, i I agree it was for me i mean i'm much more comfortable going as as a coach than i would have been if i wasn't at the camp for sure 
Yeah, being able to see everyone. So we did have kind of that um, that meet. I would say everyone wasn't like in 100% shape because we didn't really like peak out for it. We're training for Worlds, so we didn't hit like our best numbers. But you at least got to see everyone on the platform, see them make some lifts, and uh, see like reasonably what they'll be capable of in two weeks. After and get that. to know everybody too, just on a personal level. You know, I mean, I mean, everybody's different, and and uh, if you don't know them as a person at all, it's difficult to coach somebody. So. Sure. All right, James, what do you think? I'm bummed that I didn't get to go out there to the OTC and train with y'all for that week, but um, I think it'll be fun out there. I uh, I hear that the um, the training hall at World Championships is always pretty uh. Pretty cool. Tons of platforms. Um, yeah, based on the several worlds that I've been to in the past, I mean, usually it's a it's a it's a good setup. I mean, I think especially in an Eastern European country where weightlifting is a really big deal, I think we should be looking forward to a to a really nice setup. Nice. I'm uh, I'm really excited to get in there to that training center and, or training hall and see what it's like. Yeah, yeah, and there should probably be a pretty good crowd too. You know, um, there's usually a, a decent crowd. Um, at Worlds, and like I said, especially in Poland, I think we'll, we'll end up having a, a, a good crowd and a, and a great atmosphere. Yeah, hopefully we'll get uh, Zygmunt small certs to show us around a little bit because he's uh, he's from Poland, so that'll be uh, an good, extra good, plus. Good interpreter. Yeah. Uh, and all that. Yeah, <laughs> well, then absolutely. we have to figure out what he's saying in English. Yeah, there is that. Yeah. yeah there is that. <laughs> there is that. Come on, guy. <laughs> well, I get. I think the way he uh, he motivates, like when someone's going out there on the platform, he just kind of goes ha, hmm, he just kind of grunts, and well, yeah, uh, he grunts back at you. So you know, if you're pumped up and you're like ha, ah, he does it right back. Yeah, I like that. I I've started using that in training. You know, like right when I'm about to go do a lift, I just kind of do a little grunt, and uh, Travis will go back, and uh, I think that's a pretty good uh, motivation beyond uh, language barriers or anything. Yeah, a grunt's the same in all languages. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> well, yep. he, say, he says the reason why he did that is uh, to show that, uh, I guess if the lifter does that and he does that back, he views it as being kind of like, I'm with you, uh, you know, I'm here too, kind of thing. Yeah, it's so a good it's idea. Kind of a neat thing, I guess, if, uh, you know, if you're used to hearing that in training, it kind of gets you pumped up, makes you feel more comfortable when you're actually competing. But I guess uh, we got to train now, so we got our four o'clock session coming up here in ten minutes. So we got to get offline. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, we'll be in uh, we'll be in Poland. Keep tweeting with us at W Lifting Scoop, and hopefully we'll come back with some good news. I think there might be a live feed. Do you know anything about that? I don't know anything about the live feed. I think if you go to wwc2013.pl. Uh, they have a PL? link. Yep, for Poland. Poland. Oh, okay. Yeah, they have a link. It's all in Polish, but there's uh, something up there, and you can click on the live stream, and uh, so that should be fun to watch. I would guess that the live link will be out on the USA Weightlifting um, Facebook page too. Probably on USA Weightlifting. I'm sure um, a thread on Pinlay Forum will go heavy. Will uh, will pop up. So can't be too hard to find, to be honest. But yeah, James lifts. Um, next Wednesday at 10 p.m., which is 4 p.m. Eastern time here in the States. I lift Thursday at 10 p.m., which is 4 p.m. Eastern in the States. And when does Morgan lift? She lifts like real early because she's the first weight class. Yeah, it's, uh, I think she lifts in Polish time. I think it's 11 a.m. So I guess it'd be like 5 a.m. in the morning. Oh, man. So, so for you early, you have to really early risers. Be a fan of small women's weightlifting to get up to watch Morgan. Well, a lot of, a lot of, uh, so for the people out on the West Coast, you're just going to have to stay up till three. And for the people on the East Coast, you're going to have to go to bed at like nine to watch that one. But, uh, yeah, Morgan lifts. What is it? October set. Oh, you guys yeah. leave the 17th. She lifts the 20th. Uh, I believe she lifts the 21st. Okay. I'm not sure. She lifts the 20th or 21st. You can find that online if you so desire out there. And, uh, you guys got anything? I got nothing. Well, we uh we woke up real early when Kendrick went at uh World University Games and watched him compete and uh that was definitely worth it. He had a great performance there, so if you want to uh support 
Uh, Morgan out there. I mean, it might be worth waking up at 5 a.m. to watch her. You got to be a special person, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, Travis. Travis will be in Poland, and he's not even. He's, he probably won't even wake up. Wake up by eleven to watch her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I'll be there. I don't leave until the twentieth. Oh. So I don't even think I get there. Unfortunately, um, I'm in the second wave of lifters that heads out to Poland. So I'm here till Sunday. But thanks for the support. We've gotten a lot of Facebook messages. We've gotten a lot of tweets. Um, yeah, we appreciate everybody watching, and uh, hopefully we can make you proud.